everybody. Happy Daylight Savings. I never know if it's over or if it's started, but whatever it is, it feels like it's midnight. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo sé que ya comenzamos con este cambio de hora. Es este. Y sabemos porque lo sentimos porque ya está oscuro afuera. Um, just to make sure you um, are where you think you're supposed to be, welcome tonight to the community forum to discuss community priorities for the Homeless Emergency Aid Program. Así que para asegurarnos de que esté en el, en el lugar correcto, le queremos dar la bienvenida. Usted se encuentra hoy en este foro y el foro tratará sobre las prioridades de la comunidad aquí en Salinas, Programa General de Ayuda de Emergencia para Personas Sin Hogar. My name is Sonia, Sonia Kohler, and I'm very pleased to be here with you tonight. Thank you again for coming to talk about this important issue. Mi nombre es Sonia Kohler, y realmente estoy muy contenta de estar aquí para hablar con ustedes sobre este asunto tan importante. And I'd also like to just well, uh, thank the community here welcoming us today, Salinas, and also uh, the Coalition of Homeless Service Providers who um, who's helped put this together tonight. Quiero agradecerle a la ciudad de Salinas por haber sido anfitriona de este evento aquí y también quiero agradecerle a la coalición que se encarga de proveer servicios a las personas sin hogar esta noche. Gracias. Uh, I myself am an independent consultant um, that's been brought here by the coalition to help, um, help facilitate tonight's conversation. And um, I've been working here in Monterey County for over a decade, and this important is uh, this issue is is close to my heart, so I'm honored to be here with you tonight. Soy una consultante independiente y me ha contratado la coalición que provee servicios a personas sin hogar. He trabajado 10 años en esta área, así que realmente para mí es un placer poder hacer y trabajar en este campo en este tema tan importante. Así que bienvenidos esta noche. What I do um, generally, just so you know my role here tonight, I, I am not an expert on, uh, on homeless populations that are facing here. What I do is I support communities to collectively envision where they want to be and then help them get there, find out solutions for that. So that's, that's why I'm here tonight. Esta noche le diré que estoy aquí no porque soy una experta en el campo de personas sin hogar, sino porque soy una consultante independiente que ayudo a la comunidad a que ésta se reúna de manera colectiva, así recopilando los datos y entonces haciendo un informe para que lo que ustedes quieren hacer puedan llegar ahí y lograrlo. I'd also like to introduce Maricela Quezada. She's our interpreter tonight. Quiero también presentar a Marisela Quesada, que es nuestra intérprete esta noche. And she's, she's sharing the same thing that um, I'm saying, so she's using my notes to see you. Ella está compartiendo lo mismo que yo estoy diciendo, está utilizando mis anotaciones o bosquejos, solo para que sepan. So we are, um, we're giving ourselves about two hours tonight to have our discussion. And I'm going to share a little bit of information um, with you about the Homeless Emergency Aid Program, also known as HEAP. So if you hear me say HEAP, that's this program. It's a fund. And um, then we'll break out into groups, because what we really are here today is to hear your ideas for community priorities on services, emergency services, for um, people facing homelessness in our communities. La discusión o el diálogo que llevaremos a cabo será de dos horas con el propósito entonces de poder ayudar a la comunidad a hablar acerca de este tema sobre cómo proveer entonces servicios de emergencia a esas personas sin hogar. Así que estaremos tratando ese tema hoy aquí. Estarán escuchando que utilizo mucho el acrónomo HIP para referirme entonces a ese programa de ayuda y asistencia que está entonces encargado de llevar a cabo esto. First, a little housekeeping. If you haven't yet, please put your phones on silent. Really appreciate that. Um, we're here to hear everyone, and someone sometimes those buzzers help us, at least for me. I forget what I was saying, so I really appreciate that. Les pedimos, por favor, como cortesía, que su celular lo ponga en módulo de silencio, porque a veces de repente si suena un teléfono, entonces si estábamos hablando o el pensamiento lo perdemos. Así que apreciamos eso. Restrooms are in the back. 
snacks over here. Really important. Please help yourself. Los místicas, los servicios o los baños están ahí atrás y hay bocadillos de aquel lado, así que por favor, con gusto, sirvas. I'm going to be sharing some information. There'll be a chance for questions on the information shared before we then break out into groups. Then we'll come back together and discuss some of the things that um, you share with each other. Voy a estar compartiendo primero información con ustedes, después tendrán la oportunidad entonces de reunirse para poder hablar sobre lo que se compartió entre ustedes y también Sonia había dicho anteriormente que tendrán la oportunidad acerca de hablar de las prioridades para su comunidad. First of all, I will also, um, I would, uh, I invite you to invite your other community members who weren't able to come tonight to come to the other discussions around the county um, throughout the rest of the month. I have the dates up here as well, and I'll put this up at the end again. So we have, um, at the end of the week in Seaside and Greenfield, and at the end of the month in Castroville. Primeramente quiero invitarle a que por favor invite a otros miembros de la comunidad que quizá no pudieron estar aquí esta noche a que nos acompañen. Como ustedes pueden ver, vamos a tener también otras juntas a través del condado al final de la semana en Cisa y Greenfield y la semana que viene también en Castro. So before I get started with throwing some information at you, I'd love to know just a little bit more about all of you. Um, it would be lovely if I could have a conversation with each. And so just a simple question. For those of you who live in Salinas, will you please raise your hand? Antes de comenzar y de empezar, quisiera saber cuántos viven en Salinas. Si pueden levantar la mano, por favor. Gracias. How about on the peninsula? Anyone who lives on the peninsula? Alguien que vive en la peninsula. How about South County? Anyone who lives? Condado Sur. Alguien que vive en el Condado Sur. How about North County? Anyone who lives in Al norte del Condado. Condado Norte. Good. We have a spattering from all around the community. So tonight's conversation is about all of Monterey County. Yes, we're in Salinas, but we're really thinking of services um, across the county for this program. So I'm glad to have you. Así que bueno, nos da mucho gusto de que tenemos personas representando todas las diferentes partes del condado y el área de aquí de Monterrey de la Península para hablar sobre este tema. That's a good question. Thank you. ¿Hay alguien aquí esta tarde que necesite la interpretación en español? ¿Que no entienda el inglés, que solo hable español? ¿Nadie? Oh, good. I'll be sad not to have Marcelo by my side. Um. Well, thank you. We might see her a little, a little later again. Thank you. So, he, I can't get the Spanish off of there, but I think that's okay. Um, so, the Homeless Emergency Aid Program. It's a, it's a grant opportunity afforded by the state of California. It's a block grant. For the entire state, it's $500 million. I wish I could say that was for Monterey County. Um, it was authorized earlier this year by a Senate Bill 850. Um, so this is this is a brand new funding source. And um, for Monterey County itself, we have 10 million. We're in a partnership with the Continuum of Care with San Benito um, County. There's a there's also a fund for San Benito County. Tonight we're talking about Monterey County. This is um, for two years. And it's a one-time fund. This is not a fund for long-term planning. So we're talking for two years, and we're focused on emergency services for um, our community, for people facing homelessness. So it's not about long-term funding. It's not necessarily about um, prevention, or uh, it's not about transitional building, of the, addressing the entire affordable housing crisis that we have here as well. So our purpose um, tonight, as I said, I'm going to share, we're going to uh, look at the homeless census and some data around the community here that faces homelessness, um, and then we'll break out into the discussions. 
Before I do that, I do want to briefly hand over the mic to Catherine Tiomi from the um, Coalition for Homeless Services Providers. Good evening, happy election evening. I just wanted to underscore what I'm all about. Better. I just want to underscore what Sonia was saying about what the purpose of tonight's meeting is. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to gather your very essential and vital feedback. Just as important, what this meeting is not. This meeting is not to deliberate the pros and the cons of any particular proposed project. That happens in different arenas. So I just would really would appreciate if everybody would focus on the task at hand. And then lastly, thank you all for coming. Y'all look good tonight. Uh, we really appreciate um, everything you're gonna give us and uh, we appreciate your commitment, so thanks. And also thank you to everyone in the coalition for what you do in our community. Um, there are note cards and pencils on your, uh, at your seats. If you have questions, or if you have ideas that are related to this topic, per perhaps we don't get to address today, feel free to write them down. I'm gonna be collecting all of those notes um, and perhaps at another forum, um, those questions could be addressed. So before I jump into looking at the um, data from the census, I'm just going to give you a sneak preview of the discussion questions because I think it's important while you're hearing this information that you know what we're going to be talking about to give you a frame. So the first one, the first question, describe the impact of homelessness to you and your community. What gaps do you see in homeless services? And what kinds of projects, services, programs do you feel would help homeless people as quickly as possible? The as quickly as possible is about the emergency um, programming. And at the very end, um, we're also, also going to ask you, what commitment are you willing to make to help solve homelessness? You're already here tonight, and I think um, I applaud that commitment to, to being open to, to this discussion and to sharing, as Catherine said, your, your very important perspectives. Um, the information we're gathering tonight is going into the process of um, allocating the funds that are coming in through HEAP. Uh, I do have to say, just because we have a great idea tonight doesn't necessarily mean now is the moment for the community to bring that, um, bring that forth, but this is all important um, information for this process, but also could in inform future processes as well. So a little bit about the source um, of the data that we're looking at. It's the Monterey County Homeless Census Survey, Census and Survey, from their comprehensive report from the year 2017. It happens every two years. The next one is coming up in, um, in 2019. Or in 2019 already. Um, has anyone heard of this before? Has anyone looked at the data? Great. You're an informed group. Um, so what it does, this is, uh, it counts sheltered and unsheltered individuals. It has a very specific definition. It's um, a federal, uh, federal definition. Um, some, you might hear statistics elsewhere that have a different definition of homelessness, so they might not be the same as what you're hearing tonight. So the definition of a sheltered in individual is an individual or family living in a supervised public or privately operated shelter designated to provide temporary living arrangements. This is something like an emergency shelter, transitional housing, hotels or motels paid for by a charitable organization or government entity. An unsheltered individual who is homeless is an individual or family with a nighttime residence that is a public or private space not designated for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation for human beings, including a car, a park, an abandoned building, bus or train station, airport or camping ground. Um, 
excluded persons are those who are doubled up or in overcrowded housing, um, paid rehousing, private properties, or unsafe areas. The way the census is done is through a general observation only street count. There are people trained, as, um, as for our, um, our national uh, census people trained to do this, and a shelter count. Those are the two sources of information at this point. And it meets um, federal standards for reporting. Uh, this, uh, so the, that's all the data that you're seeing now is coming from there. This is where I wish I had three hands. So first of all, before we look at um, our own data, I just wanted to give you a sense of where Monterey County lies in comparison to other counties. So, um, all of these, San Francisco County, Monterey, and San Benito counties, the census is done for the two, and Santa Cruz County, we're in the top 11 counties of, uh, of the state. And that, um, it's the percent of total state homeless. So they're looking at the total from all census, censuses, census, I, and um, figuring out where we are in the percent. So we're relatively close to San Francisco and Santa Cruz County, which are the top 11. Um, the highest county, anyone want to give a guess? San Clara. I heard, I heard Los Angeles a couple times. It's Los Angeles with a whopping 41.1%, just to give you a sense of, of the difference. The next one down is San Diego with 6%, so there's a huge jump, so we're relatively close to the, to the top ones. These are the numbers they use to allocate funding county by county from the whole 500 um, million using the census. So, first of all, my apologies. This is, oh. Yeah, I have a question. What I would love to do, and I, if I didn't mention this before, I'm gonna go through the information and then open up for questions, just so that we get, get through the information. There's a card in front of you. If you can write your um, write your thought down so it doesn't get lost, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. But the questions, there'll be room for a few questions before we go into discussion. And there's also the opportunity for discussion um, amongst yourselves and as a whole group. Thank you. And I apologize, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. You'll have a chance for questions. So this is a comparison of 2015 and 2017 data. Um, there's still a lot of learning on using the census, which is why numbers jump. And I know you probably can't see this. That's okay. I'm going to tell you the numbers that are interesting. What it does is it compares shelter to unsheltered and gives us a total. Our total um, here is in un in incorporated is 2,416 and unincorporated is 419. That's about a total of 3,000 in our county. So that's a number that you can keep in your head. That's the population that was counted. The, um, the sheltered, there's a difference in where the population um, of, of, our, of our community members that are homeless are in, uh, of unsheltered are in Salinas, which is a number right up here at about a thousand, and then of sheltered are in Marina. That's where the concentration is. But if you, um, you can see that the population is scattered throughout the county. So of that about 3,000 um, people, let's, look at, let's break that down a little bit. So here we have, you can see um, in the graph on the top right, uh, over time the change, here it's 2,837, I think 3,000 is a little bit easier um, number to remember. And of that population, about a quarter, 26% are sheltered, only a quarter of that population. The rest are considered unsheltered. Um, here across the bottom, we have the types of sheltering um, or non-sheltering, 
that, that uh, the population is in. We have about 11% in emergency shelters. Most people are in, in a vehicle, a car, a van, something like that. Um, a quarter are on the street, not a shelter at all. About 15% are in transitional housing or a safe haven. And then 10% in encampments. 7% in abandoned buildings. These are our community members, people facing homelessness. Um, prior to being homeless, the vast majority were here in Monterey County. And they've been here for a while, if you can see on the bottom, 10 years or more, the majority of those people. There are community members. Um, for many, they, during the census, it was a, they were 36% were in their first episode of homelessness, and almost 60% had been homeless for one year or more. In the ages, we have um, the vast majority are over 25 years old, but 17% are under 18. Young children can't vote. Another 16% are still in our range of youth, 18 to 24%. 60, 61% identify as being a man. 37 is women and 2% is transgender. These are the top three choices. There are other choices as well. Race and ethnicity, it's relatively balanced for what the overall county um, balance between uh, of race and ethnicity is, with 33% white, identifying as white, 45 Latino, 10 black or African American, and 8 cons are considered multiracial. These are only the top four responses. There's um, smaller percentages in other race or ethnicities. Here, families, as I mentioned, these are, there are a lot of families that are facing homelessness. And 11% um, have children under the age of 18. 13% have been in the system for foster care. And I want to mention here that um, sometimes, I said earlier that this is one source of data. Some of you might be familiar with um, program, other programs that serve children and families facing homelessness, such as the United Way um, Step the Bus. And they use a number called, uh, they use a number of 9,000 children are facing uh, homelessness, which is, a, which is a big difference here. They're using a different, different definition. Those numbers come from the um, Office of Education. So I just want to clear that up. We're using a very specific um, data set. For, uh, HEAP uses a very specific data set. So let's look at um, employment. 25% of the roughly 3,000 people are employed. I was impressed by that. A lot of people facing hardships are still employed. 75% are unemployed. If they're currently unemployed, a little over a quarter are just unable to work, and we'll look at some of those um, per reasons perhaps why they're not able to work. Almost half are looking, actively looking for work and then a quarter are not looking for work. Um, there are many reasons why people face homelessness. Sometimes people are just a, a paycheck away, half a paycheck away of being homeless or have for reasons of being um, homeless. 43% is for financial reasons. 20% have faced divorce or separation. 20% have legal issues. 15% face mental um, health issues. 24% were in a fight or conflict that led to homelessness. And 38% because of alcohol or drug use. These don't add up to 100 because some have multiple issues that, are, that they're facing. Eighty-two percent of those facing homelessness or who are homeless are interested in permanent housing and um, respondents of the survey. But there are obstacles to finding permanent housing. 68% can't afford rent. 
55% have no job or income. Almost a quarter have no transportation. 35% have no money for moving costs. So a lot of it are financial reasons. 36% of the population are facing disabling conditions. Across here we have several. Um, the highest percent is a drug or alcohol abuse, followed by other emotional or mental health conditions. 18% face post-traumatic post stress disorder. 8% have traumatic, traumatic brain injury. 12 are physically um, disabled. 14 have chronic health problems and 2% have AIDS or HIV related issues. These are some of the disabling conditions um, people who are homeless are facing. So when we look at the population, um, they've broken it down by sheltered and unsheltered and the, um, and the difference here. And of the chronically homeless, only 3% are sheltered. The rest are unsheltered. Veterans, almost 60% are sheltered. Of families, 66% are sheltered. Of the unaccompanied children, 100% are unsheltered. Of the transition age youth, 9% are sheltered. That means 91% are unsheltered. And I want to um, point out something of the HEAP funding that's available. Five, at least 5% of that must go to um, youth services. So keep that in mind when you're in discussions. You'll have an opportunity to look at a list of programs. So 5% must go to youth. At least 5%. You all might tell us um, there needs to be more. So, of the 3,000 um, of our community members that are homeless, 52% reported receiving government benefits, just about half. Um, of the types of services, 46% 40, are receiving free meals, 20% bus passes, 18% shelter day services, 16 are in transitional housing, and 16 are receiving health services, and then 14 are in emergency housing versus the transitional. Of those not receiving services, um, there's various reasons why they believe they can't access them or aren't accessing them. Um, and 33%, a third of them, don't think they are eligible. Folks that are homeless who don't have a permanent home don't think they're eligible. 23% don't have ID, 21% have no permanent address, so it's hard to access services, 12, only 12% 12 ever apply, 11 don't want it, and 9% aren't receiving um, for immigration issues. So this gives you an idea of some of the obstacles. So we're going to take a couple minutes right now to answer questions about some of the data um, that you've seen or anything about the HEAP funds. And again, just a warning, I'm not an expert. If I have to turn to someone, I will. If there's, if there's um, knowledge in the room, then we'll do our best. Question. Yes, for the 67% of adults, is there a breakout for uh, senior citizens, young seniors, and the very aged? We have... Um, You're talking here with the 25 plus. There are statistics in the report for the ages, and what I'll do is um, see if I can pull those out while you're in discussion and, and get them. And, and might I just add that you know, um, you know, a, a homeless census is, is really highly regulated, right? And you you have to ask things in a certain way, and that's part of. Sometimes you can't drill down as deep as you'd like to. Question? Why, I heard, and I hope this is wrong, why are all the homeless being dumped by the ticket house? Oh, that's okay. Um, that, um, why are all the homeless being dumped by the ticket house? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that. Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that. 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 I'm not s
that's it. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, I don't have an answer for the why. And I think right now today, uh, there isn't anyone in the room that can answer that question, but I think it's an important one, so I appreciate it. Is it happening? I don't know that it's happening. Thank you. Question over here. I'm going to come over with the mic. I can just say to some of the homeless uh, that are discharged from hospitals, we have six beds in Seaside, two sponsored by each hospital that, that shelters uh, people coming out of an acute care stay that can't qualify for other other uh, other areas or that can't recover on a normal 15 to 45 minute recovery time period. So, so we get about six people out of however many are being discharged. That's a part. It's called respite care. Thank you. Any other questions? of Monterey County's homeless are over 50. 23% of Monterey County's homeless are over 50. So just to be clear, I did not count them. <laughs> this is part of the census, um, and what they have, as I mentioned before, the way they do it is uh, street observation and shelters, counting at shelters. Those are the two, their methodology. You said 100% were unsheltered, and in an earlier slide you said almost 25% were youth. Uh, there's a difference between families with youth that could be, these are unaccompanied uh, youth. Thank you. Any other questions before we move into small groups? One more question. Um, when was the um, survey, homeless survey done before 2017? How did the numbers compare, at least of the homeless? The previous one was 2015, and the numbers went up. And and I can show you the details on those if you're curious. Um, you said um, many of the homeless have been here more than 10 years and there are community members. And based on how you did the census, it doesn't appear to me that just by counting them in the street uh, or by shelter, you're getting everyone that's homeless. What I've heard is there's a lot of people that really don't belong to Monterey County and they're just dumping them over here or they're coming from other states because the more we give, the more you provide. So there's a, there was, the question there is about how, um, how we know the information from those that have been surveyed. And there, during the survey, I'll just answer that in, in terms of methodology and then hand over to Catherine. Uh, when they're doing their observations, they're also um, surveying, asking questions to the people that they see. So, the homeless survey, like any other type of survey that, that's done out there in the world, right, is based upon a methodology. And the homeless survey um, is, has two key components, well three, key components to its methodology. One is observational uh, viewing, which is why we do it in the middle of the morning when it's dark, right? So you don't duplicate people. The second is a survey that is provided to homeless individuals where they answer in-depth questions. And the third is there's a separate methodology for unaccompanied youth because unaccompanied youth is just a sim uh, simply a different population. And I can tell you this, that, you know, we have, and, and, and by the way, we have to conduct a full survey every two years. So the next one is scheduled for January 31st. And I can tell you, as the organization who's in charge of conducting the homeless survey every two years, right? You, time after time, survey after survey, it has been, it has been quantified that the vast majority of our homeless population are our friends and our neighbors and our sisters and our brothers and our children. 
the notion that people are coming through to our community because we're a magnet has been proven incorrect time and time again. I understand it's a um, it's uh, a feeling that goes out amongst the community, but I can tell you as factually based as possible that is an incorrect assumption. Two more hands up, and then I'm going to go into our discussions. So There'll be time afterwards if you have more questions as well. So you give us a lot of information. I believe you mentioned that there's a thousand unsheltered in Salinas. Is that true? I would honestly have to go back and okay. say, and I'll go look at the picture. Okay. Do you know what the shelter population of homeless in Salinas is, and then by comparison, what it is in Marina? It's all in that graph. I can put that graph up and we'll take a look. Uh, yes, if 38% are alcohol and drug users, 15% are mental, 15% don't have an ID, I don't understand your name. Uh, the reason some of these people have surveys. So I'm not an expert on the methodology of the census. Um, so I can't answer that question. Some of the numbers don't add up because sometimes people respond to more than one issue. So if the numbers aren't adding, adding up, it's because there's, they can choose multiple, so the total will be more than 100%. Catherine, do you want to add anything to the methodology? No, no that, is, that is absolutely correct. That someone can say, um, I'm struggling with an addiction issue and I suffer from PTSD or another comorbidity, you know, comorbidity. That's why it doesn't equal 100, it's not supposed to. So I'd like to, thank you. I'd like to move us into the small group discussion. Some of your questions might be answered there. I have the data here for some of those very specific questions. I'm happy to share what's in the census. Um, and so, let me give you some directions. We're gonna break out into, We'll see how it goes with six groups. Um, if I understood correctly, uh, is there anyone who needs a Spanish-speaking group right now? I, think, I don't think anyone new has come in since we asked. Okay. So our six um, facilitated table, we're going to have uh, before I have you raise your hands, we have six uh, table facilitators that are going to help facilitate the, the conversation around the questions that I have had up here earlier. We'll have to have you move around a little bit um, so the groups get a little bit bigger. The facilitator is going to take notes. At the end of your discussion, there's three questions, and I'll come back to those in a second. There's three questions, and she's going to, he or she is going to take notes. We're going to report out at the end. Everything you say is going to be written down, well, maybe not written, but the concepts, and will be a part of the, um, the summary of all these community engagement meetings. Just because it wasn't reported out at the end doesn't mean it wasn't captured. Your comments are captured and will go into the report. At the end of the reporting out, you're gonna, each group is going to share the one highlight from each question. We can't go over everything everyone said. Just for the sake of time, we do want you to be able to go home tonight. So um, please understand everything that you're discussing will be um, will be recorded, okay? As in handwritten, not audio recorded. And um, at the end of your discussion, your facilitator is going to direct you. She, uh, he or she is going to have dots. You're going to vote on a list of services that will be at your tables. There'll be a little discussion around those. Your top three services that you'd like to see in your community. Okay? Um, we're tracking this on overall in Monterey County. If the, if the service that you believe is needed isn't on that list, write it on your card and be sure to give it to us. We want your ideas. Okay? So the questions... Um, in your small groups, we're going to be going over the first three, and then at the end, you're going to um, give us what your commitment is at the end. So, the first question, describe the impact of homelessness to you and your community. 
This is your perspective. What gaps do you see in homeless services? And then what kinds of projects, services, etc., do you feel would help homeless people as quickly as possible? Remember today, we are talking about emergency services, HEAP. Um, emergency services for the homeless. Okay. So if our table facilitators can raise their hand. We've got four over here and two. We've got several with their hands up. Three, four, five. Um, if you can find, uh, keep your hands up, we'll find a spot where people can then gather. You can push tables together, you can stand in a corner, in a corner you can create a circle outside of the, um, and then everybody move to one of the facilitators. CJ, we're gonna, we're gonna all gather together. All right, good evening everyone. CJ Allen's all of us and his nice staff. Our group here. Okay, so for our group here, uh, first question was describe the impact of homelessness to you and your community. The top uh, answer we got was safety issues for kids, families, and even the homeless. And there's an unknown fear out there of having homeless individuals concentrated in a particular geographic area within the city and also potential uh, needing to increase the traffic uh, safety as you'll have more residents going to a certain area. So that was the answer, for, the top answer for number one. Number two question was, what gaps do you see in homeless services? And the top answer for our group was a lack of public showers, hygiene facilities, lack of public facilities for the homeless throughout the entire community, not just centralized in one area. So that was your answer here. And the third question was, from the following list of what kinds of projects, services, programs do you feel would help homeless people as quickly as possible? And our number one answer here in our group was to uh, increase the number of mental and drug rehab facilities uh, and increase medical service providers throughout the community. So thank you for letting me share so much. Services and shelter 
look at buildings that can quickly transform that are along bus roads. That was another good existing right facilities that could be quickly turned over into the, a permanent shelter. Hi. Uh, so for our group, uh, we decided that um, the uh, impact of homelessness to our group and to our community, we felt that the greatest impact was on the financial sense, and uh, we had to provide a lot of emergency services. And there were two key components to that. The very first one was health, and the second one was safety. And we thought that these two have to go hand in hand. They cannot be separated of each other. So that was the first one. The answer uh, to the second question, when it comes to uh, what are the gaps that we saw in those homeless services, uh, we consider that the greatest need that we have and that we don't currently have is the homeless outreach team. And uh, we actually we were thinking about what this team should have. And one of the things we were mentioning is that we need to be able to bring medicine and doctors to the people of the street. And these teams should be composed of social workers, nurses, uh, different type of doctors, psychiatrists, and other type of doctors. It should also be composed of community health workers uh, that have lived experience, police officers, pharmacists, that all can provide services to our homelessness. That's the one component that we see there's still a gap. And then for question number three, um, what are the uh, projects that we saw that will be able to help our homeless population the fastest? We thought that for our group, the most important one was the targeted street outreach. Baby boomers, there's other people. I have two empty bedrooms in my house right now. 
an idea is similar to a foster care system. You allow homeless people to stop living in encampments and temporary transitional housing that's, that's not permanent, it's all temporary, and it doesn't provide the best place for them. You put them in people's homes where they're loved, where they have a hot meal, where they're taken care of by other people. Thank you. I'm sorry to have to interrupt, but I really I need to uh, make sure we get everyone out on here. I, love, I wrote down the idea of fostering homeless. Does that capture the idea? No, because the foster care system is very flawed and it has a lot of issues, so I wouldn't call it that. Then I will put it in. I will put it in. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, in our group, I help. Um, the second question, what gaps do you see in homeless services? Again, government needs to do a better job. Uh, but th there was a big thing for stability first, that people need to be housed, and they need to have the services that goes along with that, with that housing. And then for number three, not particularly in this order, but again, housing stability. That was the first and most obvious concern of this group. Uh, the issue of tiny home community came up. And from the tiny home, then they graduate to some permanent housing. And then as well as safe parking. This would be safe parking in churches, parking lots, or some commercial building parking lots. Okay. So, for the first question, uh, describe the impact of homelessness. Uh, if I agree with you with safety, I know that was a legitimate at the time, because it's just that safety is um, a really big impact on people. And so after that, we talked about the image, um, the image of our city, the image of our communities, our neighborhoods, um, concerns about sanitation, and um, within the image, you know, sanitation, the safety, and health. So for the second one, um, what gaps do you see in homeless services? Um, my group said housing, so obviously there's a lack of housing. Um, and then moving on from that, street outreach and access to education and information is a really big gap that we see in homeless services that um, are not being provided. So access, um, a lot of people don't know what's available to them. And so street outreach will help them um, be informed. And then from the list of um, um, what kinds of projects, services, programs do you feel would help homeless people put as quickly as possible? We said E, um, targeted street outreach, um, health and safety, education programs, criminal justice diversion programs. And that's letter E. We got a lot of a broad diversity, a lot of everyone, there's some core issues that came up repeatedly and a lot of broad ideas and a lot of desires for actual solutions, which I hope uh, as a community we can get together around that as well. So what I'd like to do, first of all, thank you very much. The, the conversations were lively, there's, there's a lot of interest, compassion, and caring about this issue, and um, I appreciate that you were here tonight. And what I, in the, in the, speaking of solutions, um, this is a community issue, and so it is up, the government, we heard it needs to um, have more resources for this issue, but it's also up to us. 
for what we can make uh, and, and knowing how we can make a difference. And showing up today and talking about it is one of those ways. So what I'd like for you to do is just with your neighbor, or if there's three of you together, if you'll write down on your cards what you think that you can do. We'd like to hear from you what you think as an individual what you can do to help address homelessness. So just take a few minutes for that. Did that? Work 70 hours a week, five, 60 hours a week. <laughs> You can skip the first question. Go to the second one. What commitment are you willing to make to solve homelessness? Does anyone need an extra card or pencil? <laughs> and we're going to collect the cards, so please um, leave them on the tables, give them to a table facilitator, give them to me. And at the end, if there's anyone who, um, one or two, I'll ask for, for you to share. Who needs a card? I see a table without cards. I'm going to hand them cards. I want to pin the tail of the Thank you, everybody.
and all of that will be taken into consideration. Some of these ideas um, are, are might even be for the future as well. So um, again, I really appreciate all of your great ideas, your participation, and your caring to be here and to share your voice. So the plan is still to put the homeless shelter on 855 euros. I don't, I'm not here to talk about the plan of, of, of that. I'm here to talk about with this money, your ideas for the community services. So I can't, I don't, I don't have the information for that. So.